We're joined by New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy. So, Governor, thank you for being here today, and good to see you. Good to see you, Dan. Thanks for having me. And, and so, Governor, I do want to begin with your with your COVID diagnosis and ask you first and foremost how you are feeling. This was a routine test you took last week, right? Yeah, on Thursday I had a regularly scheduled test. I had no symptoms. Tested positive for the first time. Uh, I've got a stuffy nose. Uh, my, I'd say mild symptoms. Otherwise, I I feel good and looking forward to getting back out there in a couple of days. Well, I'm glad you are feeling well, but this really goes to show what is happening around New Jersey and the country. We're talking about this COVID BA2 variant now dominant, right? Cases slowly ticking back up. I'm sure nobody wants to see that. So what's the latest in New Jersey, Gov? And, and what's the plan here? If the, if the cases yeah, the numbers are absolutely right, Dan, have started to creep up. Uh, we're still largely in a good place, but cases are rising positivity rates up a little bit rate of transmission is a hair over one um, so we're bracing for uh, what we what we have expected uh, uh, that we would see a, a, another wave mm -hmm. uh, the good news based on the science and the data that we're read into is that while this is a very transmissible variant yeah uh, it's low lethality assuming that you're vaccinated and boosted so that's one a uh, uh, shout out I would give to everybody watching, please get vaccinated and get boosted. You can still get it as I have, right? Uh, but it'll, it'll keep you out of the hospital uh, and certainly keep you alive. And you know, Gov, just last week there was this approval for second booster shots for those over the age of 50. Is there a plan to roll that out in New Jersey? Do you yourself plan to get one? Very much so. In fact, I was in the process with my wife, Tammy, making plans to get our second booster on Thursday when I got the test result back. The answer is absolutely yes. We'll have a robust rollout, uh, and Tammy and I will lead from the front. As soon as I can get through this current uh, positive yeah. period, I will. we will be out there getting boosted. Right. Not that I was assuming you're over the age of 50 or your wife, but thank you for, <laughs> for the answer there. And, and Governor, thank you for that. Yes, I do want to pivot right now to some key issues that I'm hearing plenty of in the state of New Jersey. Folks talking about on the ground. You know I'm, I'm a Jersey resident. So let's begin with gas prices. As we approach long trips to the Jersey Shore during the summer months, the pain is real at the pump, Governor. And some states have put this pause on the gas tax. Is that an option in New Jersey? What is the quick relief? It's a difficult option. First of all, Dan, the pain is real. And this the war started by this complete thug. Putin has made it even more real. So we are the problem with our gas tax is it is it is constitutionally tied to infrastructure projects. Mm. So even if we could uh, get a holiday when those projects restarted, they'd cost a lot more money. So uh, we don't think that's the smart smartest way to go at this. Are we looking at other options? You betcha. Uh, things maybe creatively, like literally sending people a gas check uh, in the mail, particularly uh, with an income threshold. So we're we're looking at all options. We have have a huge property tax relief program in our budget, a bunch yeah. of other fee holidays. Uh, and we're we're looking uh, at a bunch of different options on gas. You know, Governor, just to press you a little bit on that, is there a dollar amount? You're talking about the the rebate checks, possible rebate checks for gas, right? And that's what you're talking about. Is there a dollar amount and a rollout or a timeline? I don't have a dollar amount yet because we'd have to do this with the legislature. I need a okay. law that I would sign, uh, but it would be meaningful. We're not going to do this unless it's a meaningful amount. But you do plan to sign that? It, well, I don't have the. Uh, there's nothing. The specifics, on my desk right? Yet. Right? Right? Gotcha. It, 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 the whole budget process unfolds over the next couple of months. So this will be that we'll have a resolution on this sooner than later. OK, good to know, Governor. Thank you. And we are also talking about saving so much money. And, you know, and there was this big conversation you and I have had about legalization of recreational marijuana. It's supposed to generate some funds for New Jersey as well. And, and back in February, Governor, you said that recreational sales were, were weeks away. It hasn't happened yet. So what, what is the latest here? Yeah, I, I think it, it is. Uh, it's taken longer, uh, and I know some folks are frustrated by that. Um, equity is a huge focus of uh, of ours. The commission that is standing this industry up want to make it absolute certain that the small players, the minority players, the folks who otherwise don't have the big businesses, that they have their fair shot at a license. Mm -hmm. If we only wanted the big the big businesses, and by the way, we welcome them as well. Yeah, uh, it'd be a lot easier. So I think it is probably, I'll, I'll say again, a few weeks away mm -hmm. from the medical dispensaries being able to sell recreational and probably a couple of months away from 
standalone retail operations. But we will get there and, and we will get there, God willing, in, in the right way, especially as it relates to equity. Yeah, and, and, and the Cannabis Regulatory Commission, it rejected those recreational sales at this point in time over concerns of a possible supply shortage. And the, the Senate president said he wants to form a committee to investigate the, the deals, calling it a failure. Is there is there a, um, a supply shortage issue right now? Yeah, I don't view this as a failure at all. I view this as a as a quest to make sure equity is achieved. The supply failure I think you're referring to, Dan, is that the medical dispensaries have to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that they will mm -hmm. have supply sufficient for their medical customers. Right. And only when that stipulation uh, is achieved can the commission go forward. Right. So that's that's the supply question. And, and and when you when when folks hear it that way, they understand. That, right. Okay, I get it. The medical folks have to be first in line. Yeah. And, and just doing some research on the issue, that was very common across the board in other states who have tried to go about from medical to recreational. That that big supply issue is often a question to make sure those who need it get it first. It's it's across the board. Absolutely right. And and, and Gov, you and I have also talked about property tax relief. You alluded to it a few minutes ago. You recently unveiled this plan for nearly two million residents, right? So briefly, for those who are eligible. What is the threshold dollar amount and when could people see some relief? Yeah, so the, it, assuming the budget passes and this program passes in the legislature, as I have proposed, it'll be this year. And this is the, uh, the these are the metrics. If you own a home and you make uh, $250,000 or less, you'll get a $700 rebate. If you're a renter, and this is a huge step because we've never had this before, yeah. and you make up to $100,000, you'll get up to $250 rebate. Oh, wow. Each of those numbers will grow, by the way, over the next couple of years. The average property tax bill in New Jersey is just under $10,000. Yeah. So 700 bucks is basically seven or eight, seven or eight percent right. reduction in property tax. It's a big deal. Yeah, and the, and the rental part is a huge deal as well. That is Amen. new. Uh, on the education front, Governor, two lawmakers, including Senate, the Senate Speaker, they're looking to start high school classes at 830 in the 2024 school year. I guess why just high schools here? And, and would you sign this if it came across your desk? Are you in favor of it? Yeah, I don't normally talk about bills when they're when it's still in, they're in the process, but I'm sympathetic to this. There's yeah. a fair amount of research that suggests if you start later and go later, uh, you're much more alert. You're much more uh, uh, keen to, to learning, uh, and 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 the on the back end you, you don't have any fall off. Uh, so I'm I'm very much open minded to this. Understood. And, and let's talk sports now. Uh, I know you're a soccer lover, as am I. NJ.com is reporting that you want to use some federal COVID dollars to help to get the World Cup here in 2026 at MetLife Stadium. How does that work? How confident are you that you can get the World Cup here? It'd be huge. Yeah, so, and, and by the way, tourism took a huge hit with COVID. So people say, well, how come you're putting federal money toward that? Because the, the, the World Cup is a huge deal to attract people. Listen, I'm, I'm very confident that it, it's a joint bid with New Jersey and New York City. Yeah. Eric Adams has been great. I'm very confident that MetLife will be among the stadia that they announce in May of this year. We don't take anything for granted. Right. But the big thing is next year, Dan, they will figure out where the, where the games will actually be played. Uh, and we want to we're, we're pitching for one of the big packages. OK, uh, the final, the opener, one of the semis, but something big. And, and uh, we're going to stay at that until we get something, hopefully something big for sure. So next year is the, is the big timeline for the answer on that one. Fingers crossed. And we have to end on this note on the NCAA Cinderella story. My goodness, at St. Peter's, you were at the game. I don't know if you know this. I briefly grew a mustache to support the team. Doug Eddard, because he was a he had a mustache. What a story here, putting St. Peter's on the map. They had a parade last Friday. What were your overall thoughts? You were at those games. Just incredible, Dan. What Jersey pride. I, I had the honor of visiting Coach Holloway and the team at a practice. We went to each of the games at Wells Fargo in Philadelphia. The Friday game was a lot happier than the yes. Sunday game. But what a great group of young men. What a great uh, small but mighty university, and, and what what a great moment of Jersey pride for all of us. Yeah, really putting New Jersey, St. Peter's, Jersey City on the map on a national platform. Now Holloway goes to Seton Hall. Listen, uh, you know I'm sure St. Peter's is 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 sad that he's gone, but I'll tell you he is the real deal. Yeah. He's a great recruiter, and we saw in this tournament he's a great in-game coach. Yeah. So this is a big, the, the Hall, the Pirates got a, got a great one in, in, in Shaheen Holloway. All right. So you're going to dual role? You're going to be governor and the coach of St. Peter's new basketball team? No? <laughs> <laughs> 
I would have announced that on Friday on April Fool's Day. <laughs> right. Governor Phil Murphy, uh, speedy recovery to you on the COVID front, and thanks for being here on Picks on Politics. Thanks for having me, Dan. Take care. All right, take care.